So what is OAuth and why should you even care about it? So OAuth stands for Open Authorization and it's a very, very popular uh, authorization framework that is used on the modern web. And the idea is that, or the goal of this is, that you want to give third-party application limited access to an API, either on behalf of the user or on behalf of the application itself. So let's talk about what this means with a simple example. So I am using this diagrams.net application, which is very good. And one of the features here is that this thing can save the file that I'm currently editing, so the diagrams you currently see, in my Google Drive. And the question is, how can we achieve that? I mean, this is obviously like a third-party application. And how does this application, how is this application able to upload a file over here, even though this is like a completely different account, right? And the solution here is OAuth. So the idea here is that you introduce something called an authorization server. So Google has like a server, it's called the authorization server, part of a normal OAuth flow. And the idea is that this application requests some token from this authorization server. And this token is only valid for the Google Drive API and only valid for specific things. That's why I said like a limited scope, right? So I don't want this thing to be able to delete like all my files. I probably only wanted to upload uh, files to one specific folder and that's it. Yeah, and that's the idea. So you basically have a third party application that somehow gets some token from this authorization server and then uploads a file and then it can use this token to access the API. And the token hopefully is only valid for this particular service, right? So with this token would hopefully be invalid for uh, the calendar API. I mean, actually it is. So that's why I said this token is not just limited in terms of what service you can access. So like the Google Drive API, but within that service, you can also have like fine grain controls over, okay, this application can read the content, it can write the content um, or it can delete, for example. Okay, so that's the idea, introducing like this authorization server. And the rationale behind doing this is that I don't want to give this third party application the password to my Google account, because if I do, then this third party application can do everything, right? They can delete my account, they can share it on the internet, what happens if this thing gets hacked. So it's like not an, it's like not a good idea. So sharing, uh, sharing plain text passwords is sort of like an anti pattern. Even though I do have to mention there's like a, something called the password grant on OAuth, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, so this is like the setup that we want to achieve. Um, OAuth is all about giving some third party application access to an API. And the thing is, okay, like how, how do I now get this token, right? Because the authorization server needs to know that this application is like legit. I mean, I can't make, I mean, it's hard, right? How I can't make a direct call. If I make a direct call, I would need to pass like some credentials and that's what I don't want, right? I don't want to enter like my password here. That's exactly the password flow, by the way. So this is like not good and there's like better ways on how you can do that. And OAuth specifies the ways in which this third party application can access this API without me sharing my username and password with it. Okay, so that's the first use case. So some third party application giving limited access on behalf of a user. So on behalf of a person like myself or like you. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the second use case, and this is uh, often forgotten, I think, the second use case is that we want to give a third party application limited access to on behalf of itself. And the idea here is that sometimes we have something called a service account. So let's imagine you are like some DevOps engineer and you use Terraform. So Terraform is a tool, is an infrastructure is called tool, which allows you to spin up like clusters in virtual machines. So you can basically modify a file, you commit the file to your version control, Terraform will detect the changes and will then uh, like work on your cluster. And this is like a really nice uh, way to manage your cluster because your setup is not manual anymore. And you can just, you know, press a button and then you can spin up like one complete cluster from scratch. So 
Yeah, so Terraform is like quite a common tool in the DevOps world. And the idea here is the same. So you have some third party application, which is like Terraform, which is maintained uh, by different company than Google Cloud. And if you make a change, then Terraform needs to or wants to create like some virtual machine in with this Google Compute Engine, for example. How does it do that? Right, because I don't want to give Terraform like a username and password to Google Compute Engine because otherwise it can, or to my Google Cloud account, otherwise it can change my credit cards, it can spin up whatever it wants to spin up, so it's not a good idea. And here the idea is as well that uh, Terraform gets a token from the authorization server that gives it limited access, so only the access that you allow, like as an administrator when you set it up, and then it can access these particular APIs. And actually I would need to add limited here so that it's accurate. Cool, so these are the two use cases. So third party application uh, that accesses some other application as a service account or on behalf of user. And this is also sometimes referred to as two legged OAuth. And the reason is that you only have two entities involved here, right? So the third party application and then the application you want to access. So that's why it's called sometimes called two-legged OAuth. Whereas here, you actually have the third-party application, um, the, yeah, the authorization or the service which has like the authorization server and also the user. So here the user needs to click on some content screen and say, yes, I want this application to access like my Google account, for example. Yeah. Cool, so that's it like for the high level overview of OAuth. Uh, one more thing I want to mention, this thing like OAuth is always about giving access to APIs. That's what authorization is. Uh, but it's not about authentication. So authentication is about logging people in. So knowing who you are, what your name is, what your email address is and so on. And with OAuth, or like OAuth was designed to only give access to APIs. So it's not an authentication framework. It's an authorization framework. You can also see that in the RFC. So if you zoom in here a little bit, you can see, okay, the authorization framework allows third-party applications to obtain limited access to an HTTP service, either on behalf of a resource owner. So resource owner would be like the user. So like me, my Google Drive. Uh, by orchestrating an approval interaction between the resource owner and the HTTP service, that's what I just explained, or, and that's the second use case I just mentioned, or by allowing the third-party application to obtain access on its own behalf. Yeah, and at the moment we're at version 2.0, which is not compatible with uh, version 1.0, uh, but this protocol here is, like, OAuth 2 is, like, very, very common on the internet. And if you've ever used this uh, login with Google button or login with Facebook, login with Apple, uh, then you have probably used OAuth or OpenID Connect, which is a thin authentication layer on top of OAuth. But we're going to talk about all of that. I will make a playlist. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to know in detail how this works. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.